Mary Flannery O'Connor was an only child of parents who were members of two of the oldest Irish Catholic families in the South. Born in Savannah, Georgia in 1925, O'Connor's early years were spent on Lafayette Square, and her house was just down the block from St. John the Baptist Cathedral, where her family attended Mass. Her family's Catholicism set her apart both culturally and religiously from the Protestant South, and reflecting on the differences between her Roman Catholic faith and those of the fundamentalist Christians with whom she had grown up and lived, Flannery insisted that her religious faith actually had much in common with the faith of her neighbors. Quote, the Catholic novelist in the South will see many distorted images of Christ, but he will certainly feel that a distorted image is better than no image at all. I think he will feel a good deal more kinship with backward prophets and shouting fundamentalists than he will with those politer elements for whom the supernatural is an embarrassment and for whom religion has become a department of sociology or culture or personality development. When her father Edward became sick with lupus in 1938, the family moved out of Savannah and into the small town of Milledgeville. During high school, O'Connor became well known for her drawings and illustrations, which were later published. She graduated from Georgia State College for Women with a degree in English and then moved on to the prestigious Iowa's Writers' Workshop, whose alumni over the decades have been awarded 17 Pulitzer Prizes. With her characteristic humor, O'Connor once said of creating writing programs such as Iowa, Everywhere I go, I'm asked if I think the university stifles writers. My opinion is that they don't stifle enough of them. There's many a bestseller that could have been prevented by a good teacher. After graduating from Iowa, she moved into the Writers' Colony at Yadu in Saratoga Springs, New York, where she began work on her novel, Wise Blood. Soon after, she moved to New York City. O'Connor became ill and then returned to Georgia, where she learned that she, like her father, who had died while she was in high school, suffered from lupus. By 1951, she and her mother had moved into their small farm, just outside of Milledgeville. This is where O'Connor would spend the rest of her life, writing short stories, novels, and engaging in a vast correspondence with both celebrated writers as well as high school students. Flannery once quipped, quote, There won't be any biographies of me, because for one reason, lives spent between the house and the chicken yard do not make exciting copy. Of course, she was wrong about the biographies. But her life on the farm, where she famously raised peacocks, was much quieter than those of other popular writers of her day. Faulkner and Porter were strong influence, influences on Flannery, as were Nathaniel Hawthorne Joseph, and Joseph Conrad. She also admired Nathaniel West. Flannery's fiction is known for its dark humor and bizarre characters, a combination which made critics categorize her fiction as in keeping with the Southern literary tradition of the Southern Gothic, or as O'Connor once referred to it as, quote, the school of Southern degeneracy. She rejected much of what was said about Southern fiction, pointing out that, quote, Anything that comes out of the South is going to be called grotesque by the Northern reader, unless it is grotesque, in which case it will be called realistic. In her oft-quoted essay, Some Aspects of the Grotesque in Southern Fiction, published in 1960, O'Connor includes an observation that sheds light on how to read her stories. Quote, There is something in us, as storytellers and as listeners to stories, that demands the redemptive act, that demands that what falls at least be offered the chance to be restored. Indeed, in every O'Connor story, the reader will find a moment of grace, of revelation, that transforms the central character. These moments are never sentimental. They are not dreamy, meditative states of being, nor are they moments of compassionate sympathy. Rather, these moments involve violence, because in O'Connor's worldview, people change only when their lives are completely disrupted. It is through violence 
that the veil is lifted and a true vision of the world of humanity and the divine is even possible. Violence is strangely capable of returning my characters to reality and preparing them to accept their moment of grace, she once said. Flannery O'Connor died at the age of 39 in 1965.